Greetings everyone. Uh, we're going to continue today our explorations with Jamra Sketchpad and continue creating some fractals. Uh, if you have not uh, reviewed the tutorial about creating the Sierpinski triangle, it is recommended that you look at that one first because it is significantly easier than this one. Uh, we're going to be creating what is known as the Sierpinski carpet, sometimes known as the Sierpinski quad or Sierpinski square. Uh, to be able to do this, um, please uh, make sure that you have Jamla Sketchpad 5.0 or higher available and open a new sketch. I already have a uh, page, so I'm going to go to my document options, add a blank page. And um, a tool that we need to construct is a trisection tool because we're going to trisect the segments of the quadrilateral. So the way you do that is you create a segment first. And trisection is basically a form of dilation, so I am going to quickly remind you how you do a dilation. You declare a point as the center of dilation, so you double click on that. You could have also done this by going to transform menu mark center, it does this boing thing again. And then you select the other end point and you say dilate and you change the scale factor they gave you to 1 over 3. And then you click on a white space to lose the selection because it's the right end point that we want to dilate again. You go to dilate uh, and then this time change the number to 1 instead of 1 over 3 to 2 over 3. And then you select everything you created so that you could go to the create new tool option and let's call this uh, try, uh, try uh, section. And observe, now you could use your tool to complete this shape uh, into a quadrilateral. Okay, so here we go. And uh, we can continue using our tool to create this inner grid that we're going to need. So I go from the trisection points to trisection points. As you can see from here. And I have created a polygon with a grid inside it. And what I need to now do is I need to create a polygon on the interior region. So I'm going to do that by going over with my polygon tool and selecting the vertices of the inner quad. When you're done, remember you need to click one more time. Uh, that's how the computer knows that you're done when you come back to where you started. Uh, I'm going to change the opacity of the um, Capacity of the polygon I just created. Uh, let's make it 100%. And let's choose a color that we like. Uh, maybe we'll go with uh, red this time. Okay. And check that your construction works. It should be dynamic, it should be movable. And the idea again uh, is um, you, once you've done a construction, you select the ancestors of your construction. I'm going to select it in a manner that I'm going to remember. I'm going to go counterclockwise, top left, bottom left, bottom right, top right. And I go to Construct menu, and you notice that the Iteration option wakes up. And uh, let's put it in a place that we're not going to get confused. So it's asking me what is now... Uh, the corresponding uh, vertices to these ancestors. This is my now top left, bottom left, bottom right, and top right. And don't forget to select uh, each time you have to add a new structure, add a new map, so you can continue doing this. Now this is my top left, bottom left, bottom right, top right. And each time, you're just going to keep adding a new map. We're going to need eight of those for all these empty uh, squares that you see here. So top, 
bottom, bottom, top, and keep adding new maps. One, two, three, four. Add new map. One, two, three, four. Moving it out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Add new map. One, two, three, four. Add new map. One, two, three, four, and we're done. Okay. Uh, it requires a little bit of patience and focus, but once you're done, it's going to look pretty. Uh, this is where you go to display and you decide if you want to decrease or increase the iterations. Uh, if you increase, uh, if you decrease it, I think up to one, you'll uh, see something like a checkerboard pattern. You could increase it, but I don't recommend you're increasing it more than three. I think this is where it's become so dense that it's not actually fun to watch anymore. It will really slow your computer. Okay, so I like what I see, so I'm going to click on that. And uh, here is our uh, Sierpinski carpet. The fun thing about it is, as you see, it's dynamic, so you could create this sort of perspective drawing effect. Or you could actually even fold it over. Uh, you could fold this uh, across. It looks kind of cool. What I recommend, as before, is that we turn this into a tool. Uh, to make the tool, remember, you select everything. And you go to your tool menu, create new tool. Uh, let's call this the Serpinski uh, square. Or actually, let's call it a quad because it's not really a square. Serpinski quad. Uh, now that you have this quad tool, you can actually use it. Uh, let's actually test it to see how it's working. Go like that in order, and then it falls like that. That's great. So you can use this tool to create uh, something that looks like a Sierpinski cube. One, two, three, and this is where your artistic abilities will show. Uh, you can select everything and do things like, well, I want to have all the segments to be thinner. For example, uh, you could select all of your points, go into the point tool and select all points. Uh, and you could say, I want to hide all of the points. And you could use some artistic sense here. Alrighty, I hope you had a good time. Uh, your skills are now getting to be quite advanced. This is a pretty advanced construction. And I hope uh, you will continue exploring and creating uh, interesting fractals and interesting shapes. Take care.